Hello, and you have joined Allen High School's APIB chemistry class studying thermodynamics and thermochemistry. We are focusing in on enthalpy right now after our discussion of entropy and free energy and enthalpy together. And I'm going to start with a review of pre-AP, but we all know by now that reviews of pre-AP are much, much needed, that the memory of pre-AP chemistry is long, long gone for many of you. Um, but you have seen this before. Uh, this is a heating cu cu curve, excuse me, or a cooling curve. Now, in this direction, it's a heating curve. You can ask yourself if you would have to put it on the stove, then it is endothermic. And this whole process requires heat. Now, if we went, in the opposite direction, if it was a cooling curve, if we were withdrawing heat, removing heat, that's something you'd put in the freezer to get it to happen a little better, a little faster, and that's because it's exothermic, and a freezer sucks up the heat to shift the process into the direction of making a solid or liquid, depending on what you're doing. Okay, so, Exothermic for a cooling curve, endothermic for a heating curve. Very important concepts. Now you've seen the, one of these formulas, not only in pre-AP chemistry, but you should have seen it in physics. It's often called MCAT. C is the heat capacity. It's the measure of the amount, or the temperature, the amount of energy required to raise one gram or mole, be careful, of a substance one degree Celsius. And uh, in a, if it's on the per gram basis, it's often called specific heat capacity. If it's on the per mole, it's molar heat capacity, All right? Now, that's what we're going to be using when there's a delta T. But just because there's not a change in energy doesn't mean that heat is not involved. So let's sketch one out. I know I didn't give you room. You might want to do this on a separate piece of paper. But I want to go ahead and sketch this out and get some details. When you're working this, these types of a problem, you really want to lay it out as thoroughly as you can. Now, I'm not going to draw this to scale. I'm just going to get our five components. We can heat a substance as a solid. Then we can melt the substance. Then we can heat a liquid. And then we can vaporize a liquid. And then we can heat the vapor, right? Or go in the reverse. But the potential exists for five segments here. Now, on this axis, we have temperature. I like heat on this axis, although you will sometimes see time that a spe specified amount of heat has been added. Uh, I wanna focus on heat here. We have that segment to the left, then this segment is a different math step, then this segment, and then this segment's yet another math step, and this is another. Now, a problem could ask you for one of these steps or all five of these steps. It depends. Um, the reason I like to write it this way is hopefully you can see that if I could find Q1 for this process and Q2 for this process and Q3 and Q4 and Q5, it would be the most they'd be, that my total that the total heat that's involved is simply the sum of each of these. Now, the most difficult part about this is people messing up the different constants. Now, here, what we're going to use is the heat capacity of our solid. The ability of a solid to absorb heat before changing temperature is very different than the ability of a liquid to absorb temperature. Uh, it takes differing amounts, and it's very different than the heat capacity of the gas. Those are going to be three different constants. You need to pick the correct constant for the correct step. Now, here, there's no temperature change, but there's clearly heat involved. Well, that's because when temperature is rising or decreasing, as the case may be, we have changes in kinetic energy going on, all right? Um, but at the phase changes, so this would be our freezing or melting point, this phase change here 
would be our, um, let me see if I can draw this in a color that's not too much in the way. All right, this right here, if we drag this over here, that's our melt, or our, our vaporization, our boiling point, sorry. That's our boiling point, all right? Now, things are happening, but the temperature's not changing. If you have no change in temperature, you have no change in the average kinetic energy. Now, you may have tweaky little changes between substances um, or between molecules or atoms, but overall, there's no change in the average kinetic energy. And that's because the changes that are occurring here are occurring in potential energy. In those places, intermolecular forces, if it's covalent, bonds, if it's network covalent, metallic or ionic, do you remember that? Oh man, I bet you'd never thought you'd have to hear that again. You're gonna hear it at least one more time. If it's molecular, it's an intermolecular force. If it's ionic, metallic, or network covalent, we're actually breaking bonds. Um, as we go up, we're breaking. As we go down, we're forming. And so remember I said that potential energy is all about attractions. So potential energy is increasing in this direction. All right? So five possible steps. If there's no delta T here, heat capacity has delta T, there's an implication that Q is zero, but it's clearly not. So here what we're going to use is a measured constant delta H of fusion for the melting process, melting or freezing, depending on your direction, and delta H of vaporization. Now, all we'll have to do is change the sign, depending on whether it's a heating curve or a cooling curve. The heat capacity, those formulas, if you always do final minus initial for your delta T, you'll get your sign. Here, you have to provide your sign. All right, let's give one a shot and see how we do. Um, I think if I do just one of these, you're going to be okay. Um, so let me just do um, a simple one here, a one-step problem, and then I'm going to jump and skip 17 and jump right to 18. So I have ethyl alcohol here, and there is a temperature change. It's asking me for the final temperature. This is my heat. It gives me my initial temperature. I'm given mass here. And notice that a specific heat was given. It's in grams as well. Now, a reminder, and I can prove it to you in class. Delta T can be in Celsius or Kelvin. You'll get the same number. It doesn't matter. So you can look at this if this says delta C, delta, or excuse me, degrees Celsius or Kelvins here, it's, it doesn't matter. You can use either degrees Celsius or Kelvin when you calculate a delta, all right? So Q, I'm going to use MCAT since there's a temperature change. Q is going to be my mass times my heat capacity times my delta T. So that's, I don't have to even know the structure of this because I'm given mass and I don't need to go to moles. And I have its heat capacity. And let me go ahead and put the units in and you'll see that they do cancel. Uh, that's joules per gram degree Celsius. And you can convert to Kelvin if you want, but you don't have to. And T final minus T initial, which is 23.5. Okay, and that is all equal to my Q, which was given as 1575. So if you solve that for your final temperature, you do indeed get 15.8, let's call it 15.8 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's one type of problem. You'll wanna check that algebra. There's, it's a little bit tricky. You have to watch your signs carefully, uh, but I think you can do that. I'm going to go on. I'm going to skip this because I don't think you need me to work two of them. Uh, if, I, if you do, I will gladly work that other one in class for you, but I don't think you need that right now. Instead, I'm going to take a look at this next one, which is a much longer one. I like to draw out my possible steps. I can heat a solid, melt, liquid, vaporize, 
gas. Now, I could be going down on that, it, going downward on that. That would be fine. Uh, that's a distinct possibility. Here's temperature, here's heat. Now, it gives me acetone. If this was water, you would expect it to know boiling points and melting points, but it's not. So we're given those. Here's my melting point. You can always tell a phase transition because phase transitions are flat in terms of temperature because the energy is involved in potential energy changes, not kinetic energy changes. So that's 95.85. My boiling point is 56.2. Okay. Now it tells me that I'm going from 72.8, so I'm somewhere above here, and I'm cooling it. So this is a cooling curve example. I'm cooling it to minus 100 degrees Celsius. Cooling curves, if you remember, cooling curves are exothermic. So this should be an exothermic process, which means when all is said and done, each and every one of our Q values should be negative. And I give the answer up there, and it is indeed exothermic. But that's a good way to check your logic on that. So I have five steps here. One, two, three, four, five. Now you may want to go ahead and put these constants in on the chart. It might help you make sure you don't miss one so, uh, and, and grab the wrong one. So this delta H of fusion is 5.68. So I know that's the constant I'm going to use there. Delta H of vaporization is what I'm going to use while I'm vaporizing it. Heat capacity of the solid is 3.156. Heat capacity of my liquid is 2.81. And of my gas, out of room a little bit here, is 1.298. So you may well want to add those constants there just to make sure you use them in the right place. So step one, there's a temperature change, so I'm going to use MCAT. My heat is my mass, 63.8 grams, times the heat capacity for the solid, um, which is, let's see, I started down here. So this is, sorry, 3.156. And then it's minus 100 minus a minus 95.85, okay? And if you do that map, math, excuse me, you should get minus 836 joules, okay? Now let's try step two. Step two, I'm freezing. So I'm going from, and I'm going this direction. Sorry, I did this backwards on you. I'm going that direction. I just did that step. I'm going this direction now. And so Q, I have to use that constant. So I have 63.8 grams. Well, that constant is given in on a per mole basis. So I have to convert mass to moles. One mole means I need my molar mass. Well, remember, it's a ketone, acetone. That means I've got a double bonded oxygen in there. Now, this ketone is also known as propanone. Propanone has three carbons. Every carbon has to have four bonds. So a ketone is C3H6O. It's like an alkene with an O in terms of its formula. And if you did that molar mass, it's 58.09 grams. And then I'm going to plug in my 5.68 kilojoules be very careful per mole because you notice that the heat capacities were given in joules and these were given in kilojoules. So let's go ahead, since we already started with joules, let's go ahead and continue with joules. And I get minus 6240 joules. All right, now let's do step three. This is the third segment and we are going down. So Q is an MCAT. 63.8, much like what we had before, but different constant. It's like same island, different t-shirt, or, you know. 
um, if you ever go on those cruises. All right, I'm at 56.2 and I'm going down to minus 95, so it's minus 95.85, it's final minus initial, minus 56.2, and I get 27,300 joules. And the fourth, as I've labeled here, it doesn't matter what order you do these in. I would have preferred if I'd done them down like that. I just jumped in to the fray and did it at the end. So that many grams, one mole. I've already done this, so you really don't have to show this work again if you wrote that down. The key here, though, is I have a different constant. Uh, it takes more energy it looks like to vaporize because you're completely breaking intermolecular forces. Therefore, my energy is released because we're forming more intermolecular forces. And that would be kilojoules per one mole. And convert that to joules, and you're going to get 34400 joules and you have to supply the sign, all right? At the, at the phase changes, you have to supply the sign for these. So now let's try step five, is yet another MCAT, 63.8, different constant. So I have 1.298 here, and then I was up here, and I went to the melting, or the vaporizing, the boiling point here, so it's 56.2 minus 72.8, because we're going down like this. So this was the final, that was the initial. And it's minus 1370 joules. Now, all we have to do is take those numbers. So right now we have five different numbers. And all we have to do is take those five numbers, add them together, and we would get our final, and that is indeed given up at the top as minus 70.1 kilojoules. Wow, that was a long problem. I bet you can guess that you're not going to get a whole lot of them that are all five steps. So until I see you in class, this is signing off.